Good. All right. So, um, so this is uh, characteristic classes continued. So uh, recall what we did last time. We defined a connection on E, which is a vector bundle over M. So this was, we gave a new formulation for connection, which was a map from, uh, so my notation now omega zero of M and E, Omega one of n. So remember, this was our notation for uh, smooth sections. I don't write smooth, but I just say sections of n or of e. Always smooth sections, and these are one forms on m with coefficients. in E, that's the name of this space. And uh, this map is R linear. Plus uh, it has to satisfy Leibniz group, right? Okay. So we had uh, several uh, observations about the uh, connections in this language, in this terminology. Now, uh, one uh, basic lemma you want to prove, anyhow, is that uh, any vector bundle admits a connection. I mean, this is a concept uh, that we define, but who guarantees that such a, such an object uh, like this exists? So we have to we have to prove that it exists. And in fact, this proof is not difficult uh, if you know what you're doing. So uh, what we can do, we can cover M. We can give it open cover. So this is like your manifold. You can cover it by open sets, so on, UI, such that this uh, E restricted to UI is trivial. So in other words, E restricted to UI is isomorphic to M cross, uh, no, sorry, UI cross RN or CN. If your uh, vector bundle is complex, then you just put CN, that's okay. So it's a trivial over, over each of them, then it's, it's trivial. Okay, so then over each, you can choose a connection because uh, we know uh, connections, all connections on trivial bundles, right? So pick angle I on EI, on UI rather. Uh, but that now, this is just defined on this open set. So in other words, this is just for smooth functions on this open, I mean, the smooth sections of E over this open set. And this is smooth function sections may go to infinity. I mean, no one said that they should be extendable. And so this not I also can, can have, uh, you know, can, can approach to infinity on, on the boundary of this UI. So I cannot say that this can be extended per se to uh, all of uh, M. But then uh, in, in, in geometry and analysis, there is a trick here that always uh, works and in most of the time works. And it's a good idea, that's a partition of unit. So a pick a partition of unity, that's idea of general topology. Of I, I belong to I subordinate to subordinate to discover U I. So 
So what does this mean? It means that these fi's, first of all, these are the smooth functions that are defined on all of them, smooth. Okay, and support of fi is inside ui. That's the second property. And the third property is that this is a locally finite, uh, 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 I mean, uh, set. It's locally finite. Uh, locally finite means that for each point, there exists an open neighborhood where only finite number of these guys is non-zero. Uh, on that open neighborhood and away from, uh, I mean, so, so for every point, uh, there is a small neighborhood around that point that only finite number of these FIs are non zero. And the rest are all zero in the neighborhood, in a small neighborhood of, of that point. Okay? So this is called locally finite. And there is a theorem in general topology, uh, basic analysis that shows that if you have a nice space, manifolds are definitely in that class or noise spaces in that regard. Uh, there is always a partition of unity subordinate or subject to um, any open color like that. So we pick that, right? Okay. Oh, fourth one. Okay, sorry. This is the very important condition I need. Sum of fi is equal to one. Sorry. Now this condition uh, in view of the third condition makes sense, right? Because I said it's uh, finitely uh, as locally finite, so I mean this sum it looks like is an infinite sum. In fact, the indexing set could be even uncountable. That's okay, but around each point, the only finite number of them are non-zero. So the sum uh, at each point is defined, no matter what, and that's great, right? So that's uh, so these four properties are such. Okay, then what you do, and then, uh, then you just say, nabla, then let nabla be equal to sum of i, nabla i, i belong in there. And uh, this crucial property shows that this is again a connection, and it has cured all these singularities, uh, near boundary issues, and all those issues that can completely cure them. So you always have a connection in this sense on any manifold, and doesn't have to be compact. Okay, so this is the this is the idea, and this is the proof. Okay. So once, uh, so now, but uh, now. Um, Note that uh, we constructed one connection like this, but in fact, there are zillions of zillions of connections. There are uncountably many connections on, on any manifold. I mean, it's just like if there's a zoo of connections. There exists uncountably many connections. Uh, I mean, uh, so I can ask as an exercise why so the exercise is why so thinking about this uh, uh, makes you think about some issues regarding to space of connections and the nature of the space of connections. And okay, so, but I don't need this now. So now another thing is uh, we want to extend the connection. Now. So then the next topic, which is important is extension. Of a connection. So um, we want to extend it now from omega one of Me from one forms to omega two of Me, two forms. So I give a definition first uh, by the following formula. So what is this space, by the way? 
This is just uh, smooth sections of, uh, uh, you see, this is basically, uh, I mean, omega one of M, right? And tensor it with C infinity of E. Okay, so essentially it sums of such elements, like we have one form and tensor it with some section. That's basically what it is, and sums of such things. But the, the, this, this is now over C infinity of M, right? Anyhow, no matter how you think about it, then, then just let us define on some element like this, so, so S, for example. Let's define nub of omega tensor S by definition equal to, we just say, well, this is D omega tensor S plus, but this nub you should think of it as an operator that has the D one, and this omega is a one form. So when these two one forms, uh, this one and one move over each other, you pick up a minus sign. So this is important, minus, and then this is my definition, and you will see why this definition is important. Then put omega tensor nub of s. Okay. First of all, let's see uh, if we understand this definition. I mean, elements here. I mean, this is also. I mean, this is what omega two of m tensor c infinity of e, right? So again, we got, uh, elements here are like two forms, tensor some section. So this, are, this time these are two forms. Okay, so now this is a two form. Get omega was one form. D is two form, tensor section, omega and tensor. Well, what is this guy? This guy is itself something like sums of uh, one forms, tensor sections again, because it's, it's, it's an object. Originally it's an object which is here, right? So if you, Tensor here, we just use wedge. So this is a two form now. So this is in the right place. I'm just checking that this is in the right place. Okay, so this definition makes sense. All right, so now what's the situation? So, so far we have got something like this. We have omega zero M E. Now we, originally we had omega one M E. This is nabla, this is nabla. We extend it to nabla, again, it goes to omega two. But again, by the same token, you can, you can extend it. There's no, there's no, I mean, nothing to stop you by extending it here again to omega three of ME and so forth. So in general, then your definition would be nabla of omega tensor S, if this belongs to omega P of ME, for example, that's going to be equal to um, D omega tensor S plus minus one to degree of omega, omega tensor nabla of S. So we extended this nabla to the whole uh, complex of uh, forms with coefficients in E, right? Okay, so that's what it is. Now um, I want to define curvature in this language. Definition. The curvature of Nabla is the operator so I call it R going from omega zero of N E to omega two. Oh sorry, so let me put it like this R equal to Nabla square that goes from omega zero of M E to omega two of M E. Okay, let's uh, think about it, what's going on. Uh, here is, you, you take a section here, 
you apply nabla, you go here, and then you apply nabla again, you end up here. So you end up in, in, in omega two of them. And, and that's, that gives you an operator from this space to this space. And now we call this the curvature operator. Okay, so this is uh, this is our character operator by definition, uh, but let's see what it means really. So uh, one of the things to notice is that there's a lemma is that this character operator is actually C infinity of M linear uh, R equal to nabla squared is C infinity of M. Linear. Uh, it means that uh, R of F times S, if you have a section here, you multiply it by a smooth function, uh, this totally comes out. That's what it means. Now, uh, this is quite surprising, right? Because Nabla doesn't have this property. Nabla actually has uh, Leibniz property, right? And this one also has a similar Leibniz property. But the composition is very nice, it has this linearity property. So let's uh, see the easy proof. Okay, R of FS, start from left hand side and you want to reach to the right hand side. So let's compute R of FS equal to Nabla of Nabla of FS. That's equal to nabla of what nabla of fs by Leibniz. This is uh, well, this is f um, no, fs. Uh, I mean, yes, comes out plus df tensor plus df tensor. Um, no, no, no. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry. This is f nabla of s plus um, plus uh, df. S times or tensor S. Right? So now let's uh, com continue this. This is equal to, well, nabla of F times this. So this is equal to F nabla squared of S. As this property from definition, it easily follows that it has this property plus, uh, but then uh, this uh, nabla, this is DF. Um, DF tensor S, uh, DF tensor nabla of S. It's this part. Now, nabla acts on this one. So, this is uh, going to be equal to negative DF. But there was a negative sign here from beginning. Negative DF tensor uh, nabla of S. Plus uh, D two of F tensor S. Okay, this cancels with that. This is zero because D two is zero. So we are using two different facts here. This is zero because D two is zero. This is cancellation, and this is F nobler squared. And this is of course F R of S. So this satisfies the condition. All right. So it has a it has this nice property. So uh, then, as a result, I can consider R as a geometric object itself. So let's now look at this. So lemma implies that this R actually belongs to omega um, two of M and the end of uh, E. I mean, uh, it's uh, it, it, it's an operator that goes from here to there, but then uh, because it's C of M linear, I can consider it as, a, as, a, as an element here. Yeah. So IE and regard R as a two form with values.
in, in the morphisms of the genome. So the slogan is that curvature is an endomorphism value twofold. That's a slogan that we can curvature is an morphism value. That's, that's, that's a kind of useful slogan. Um, and then uh, we will see that this is uh, this makes perfect sense uh, if you look at examples uh, uh, in, in, in practice also. Okay. Sorry, in the case of E being the tangent bundle, is this just the Riemannian curvature tensor? Uh, yes, that's exactly the, uh, although, the Riemann curvature tensor was uh, under the condition that uh, you're also fixing a Riemannian metric on your tangent boundary, right? But as you know, there is no need to fix a metric. You just define a connection on TM. I think that's what you meant, uh, Tony. You just have a, imagine you just have a connection on TM and this is really the good old uh, curvature uh, object for, for that connection. Yes, absolutely. And if, the connection comes from Riemannian metric. This is the Riemann curvature tensor. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a good point. Yes. Uh, so now, but also now we have to see uh, this uh, with, with the definition of curvature. Maybe I gave in the second lecture uh, when we use this nabla sub x notation, not this uh, not this uh, just this fancier notation. We'll see that soon. So let's let's look at the kind of important example. Uh, what about trivial bundles? So in that case, we saw that uh, this complex, I mean, omega p of e, uh, sorry, of m. Uh, with coefficients in E is just uh, equal to omega P of M N times, right? So we just are looking at columns of, in this case, that's a very, very particular uh, object. These are just is columns of uh, forms, right? Omega 1, omega P, 2, omega N. This omega I belongs to omega P of M, right? So that's a that's a nice thing. So this complex omega zero m e omega one m e omega two m e that we work with, right? It's just uh, this uh, really like the wrong complex, but inflated n times. So you're just stacking these the wrong complexes into into columns. So this is just omega zero of m. And, and then uh, there is this uh, thing, which is omega one of M and, and omega two of M and, and so on. Of course, the last one is omega N, M cap N, but N is the dimension, right? And last time you remember, we uh, found the general, the most general connection uh, for this, right, for this uh, case, the general connection in this case turns out to be, in, in the notation that we had, turns out to be in Obla, I said that this is equal to D plus A. Now let's see what is this. A belongs to Mn of omega one of M, so A was like matrix omega ij. What is omega ij's belong to omega one. So this is a matrix value one form, right? Matrix value one form. And this D is uh, does the, the differentiation job and this uh, gives you uh, multiplication operation, right? Oh, 
Okay, now uh, in this case, let's compute uh, number square. In this case. Well, let's compute it. I mean, so we have got the D number squared of uh, say, um, of uh, some section here, say, is equal to D plus A times D plus A of that section. So that's equal to D plus A times DS plus AS. And remember this section is just uh, column of functions, right? And we multiply by these one forms. So we get a column of one forms. And this is column of functions. You differentiate again, you get a column of one forms, you add them. So now we have to apply this operator, which is another novel essentially in this case, to this one. So what is that? Now let's, let's compute that. That's equal to now, uh, okay, so I can just uh, continue here. That's equal to, well, let's compute. This is D of D of S, okay? Plus D of A times S, okay? Plus A D S, A times D S, plus A two of S. Okay, so now d b is zero because d squared is zero for functions, so that's equal to zero. Now, what is d of a s? Well, this is sums of products of one forms and and zero forms functions, but we have we have to apply like this rule to to this d, right? So now we can just apply. So I just drop this d two, and then I get what is d of a s? That's equal to d a times S minus A DS. Now you have to be very careful uh, not to forget putting minus sign here because uh, this D is moving over one form. Remember, this is a matrix of one form. So when D is mo moves over one form, picks up sign. So this is minus here and then plus A DS. plus a squared s. So this with that cancel, so eventually you get da plus a2 s. So that's very nice uh, because it shows that if you have your connection matrix A like that, then this is the expression for curvature matrix. Okay, so R is a matrix of two forms. Because I mean, what is the notation? So for example, D of this matrix omega ij by definition is D omega ij. It's kind of convenient to use this notation instead of cumbersome sums and elements. And what is a square? Now we have to be careful with a square. What is a square? A square, really like this matrix. Uh, so if I want to compute, for example, the ij entry of this matrix, which is this is a two form, it's going to be equal to a i k veg a k j. So it's a mixture of uh, matrix multiplication, like from usual linear algebra. And then multiplication of uh, one forms because the, because entries are not numbers or one form, right? So okay, I mean this is a sum, of course, right? So this is a two form. Each entry is a two form, and that's uh, how we uh, see this. So this is a very, uh, very nice, very, very useful, extremely useful formula. So I'm going to erase this part and just keep that. Uh... Now, you sometimes you may even see that as So 
So you may you may you may see that as V A plus one half commutator of A and A. So what does that mean? Again, these are not commutators of usual operators. This is commutator in the sense of uh, this sine graded object. So maybe you can just say, sometimes people say this is super commutator. Uh, so the super commutator of uh, this sine object basically is this one, is AB minus minus one degree of A degree of B, B A. So if you have objects that have degrees, like you're working with differential graded algebras or complexes and stuff like that. So you can, uh, if you can multiply them, you can also take super commutators. The super commutator of this is AB minus minus one degree of A degree of B, B A. So in this case, now uh, let's compute this super commutator A A is equal to A times A minus Oh, sorry, minus minus one. Well, the degree of A is one because it's a matrix of one folds. So this is times one A times A. So that's two A, a squared. That's why we have to put one half here. Right? So this is a this is a convenient uh, alternative notation. Sometimes you may see this, and sometimes you see this. Sometimes you may even see the A minus A squared. Because they use a different convention for uh, for this curvature matrix, uh, which I'm not using in this course so far. But I don't think I will use it. Any questions? So we have the connections uh, mapping every degree. Is there any interest in considering the curvature as a map from say omega one to omega three? Um, you mean uh, like? Considering triple product of those things? No, like considering the curvature operator in higher degrees. Oh, oh you, you mean just defining an operation which takes us uh, sections to, what was it? What was your, your question, sorry. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I see, now I understand. Yes, yes, uh, we will see it soon, actually. I mean, it's coming. That's, uh, that's a, 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 indeed, this is quite crucial to consider that because uh, we want to uh, do uh, just algebra in this. So we have to go into higher things. Yes, no, no, absolutely. That's, that's important. Powers of curvature operator, for example, is, is essential, yeah. Will, will, uh, it will come, is that, is that your question? Yeah, thanks. Okay, yeah. Yeah, this is coming soon. Uh, any other questions or comments? Uh, yes, so I was wondering if the A square is a matrix multiplication? Yes, A squared is matrix multiplication, um, but uh, with understanding that I made here that you also use a wedge product because matrix multiplication, maybe the, the one that you know is for uh, numbers, like real numbers, complex numbers, or elements of a field. But it doesn't have to be like that. It, the, the elements can be from any ring, and that ring doesn't have to be commutative. You can form matrices over that ring and then define matrix multiplication using the matrix multiplication from the original ring. Yeah. So that, that, that just goes through. It's purely algebraic and it's a very useful thing to actually work with. So that's, uh, that's essential. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so we'll use that, uh, in fact, that, uh, that convention language terminology uh, quite a bit now, today and tomorrow and, and next week. Any other questions or? Okay, now, uh, so, what we, so now what we, um, keep this example in mind. If uh, the notation gets heavy and abstract, so always pays off to have this, this example of trivial vector model in mind. I mean, then that really uh, helps you a lot to, to, to feel grounded, to feel that things are not so abstract out of control. This, this, this example is very, very useful. This example is very useful. That's what I'm saying. Okay, now let's go back to generalities as we've been asking and you've been discussing your questions. Oh, 
Okay. So now we have two complexes. There is this one omega zero m uh, end of e, and there is uh, so omega one of m end of e, and there is omega two of m end of e, and uh, we go on. Of course, the last one is omega n of m. And of E, this is this top one, big one. And down here we have omega zero of M and E. We have got omega one of M and E. And now we have omega two of M and E and so on. Till you reach omega N of M and of, oh, sorry, E. Okay, now here, well, let's see what we have here. We have here, we have this operator nobla, and then I define nobla, and then you can extend, you can extend. Now, nobla squared may or may not be zero. So we say flat connection, so definition. A connection. Nobla on E is called flat. If R, if it's curvature, R, which is number square, is equal to zero. So that's kind of. Um, I mean, terminology-wise, makes sense. You want to say something is flat if there's no curvature. Of course, there's, there is a lot uh, to justify here and to understand, and we don't need all of that, but this is just, for us, it's just a definition. Uh, so a connection is called flat if its curvature in this sense is zero. So if it is flat, then this is a complex, and you can take its cohomology, for example, and things like that. But uh, anyhow, but in general, for general uh, uh, bundles, this may not be flat. Let's see uh, what we can do up here. Uh, for example, we saw that this element R is here, right? The curvature is an element of this space. Uh, there is an operator here, which is V. And uh, this D uh, is defined like this. So basically, is 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 this D of some uh, say form like that? That's equal to the commutator of uh, um, uh, okay. So I should just trying to put the right definition. Nobla. Uh, and uh, eta. Yes. You see with yes. Okay. So this this is this is this is a definition. Now we have to make sure that this guy is actually is is here, right? And this commutator is, by the way, this is not the not composed with eta. Minus minus one to degree of eta, eta composed with nabla. So this is the definition. Now you have to check that actually this guy that this d of um, so d of eta is really in the right spot. In other words, we have to check that d of eta. Uh, is uh, basically, um, I mean, really, uh, I mean, we have to check that this operation sends, uh, yeah, we have to check that D of eta belongs to omega P plus one of M and end of E 
if uh, eta belongs to omega n, uh, omega p, sorry, of m and n of e. So this uh, basically means that, uh, so we have to check that the eta of some fs is really equal to f the eta of s for any section. I mean, now for any s belong to omega p of m and p. So at this stage, I agree. This is a, this is a bit getting too, uh, too abstract, but this is easy again to check using this rules. So this is easy to check. So the point is that we have this operation, which is taking computators with, with, uh, with Nabla, right? And takes us, now, uh, one thing to notice is that Nabla itself is not uh, an element of this, but this is a kind of interesting maybe note. Nabla, I mean, does not belong to omega zero of m and n of e, right? Does not belong to, um, I mean, omega one of m and n of e. Because it's not, uh, since nabla is not, it's not C infinity of M linear. But once uh, you take the commutator, this issue of C infinity of M linearity takes care of. So that's, uh, that's because of this simple thing. One checks over there. Now there is another thing, there's a difference between this complex and that complex. Uh, the difference is that uh, this is an algebra. You can take elements here and multiply together. Uh, easily you can multiply elements. There. But here, what we cannot multiply, because we cannot multiply elements of a vector space, right? But we can, we can multiply elements of this endomorphism algebra of vector space, which is matrix algebra. So very much, this is like matrices. This is like vectors, if you want. Uh, so let me now uh, just. Uh... So could I ask a question real quick? Yes, yes. Um, what I am a little bit confused about what d eta of s means. Shouldn't s be a section of e, not a p form? Uh, what? Sorry. Let's just say I'm confused what d eta of s means. S is a section. Uh, so uh, yeah, s. Uh... The eta over f s, you mean? Yeah, for s, uh, an e value p form. Yes, here. What does this mean? Yeah. Yeah, because I want to check that this is in omega p plus one of m and n of e, right? So I have to check that if I give you a, a e, e value p form, it gives me an e value p plus one form. But in, in a way such that it is C infinity of M linear. So I'm just checking this really checks that this is the case. Um, because objects here are endomorphism valued forms, objects here are just E valued forms. This is like opera operators over this space, basically. I mean, this space is like all linear maps of this space, if you want. So how would you apply a endomorphism valued P form to a vector valued P form? Well, because, uh, so what is an endomorphism valued? Uh, what is an, okay, so here is, for example, what is an endomorphism valued P form, right? So we have got omega, tensor, some uh, object, which is, I call it maybe eta. Well, this is now uh, acting on, 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 on this, 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 this is a section of end, right? And this is, so this is in omega p, this is in uh, say end of e, right? So let's act this on say omega prime tensor s, 
Well, this is equal to omega wedge omega prime. Of course, there should be a sign convention here. And then eta axon s. You see that? Yeah. So eta axon s creates another uh, element of E, which is section. And these two things multiply together easily. Right, okay. So that's, 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 yeah. I'm just surprised that we get a 2p form then. Oh, uh, which, uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be which 2p, 2p form. Or, I guess I'm surprised we're increasing the degree. Uh, oh, you mean here? No, like, um, I'm surprised we take omega wedge omega prime. It's, Oh, 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 um, actually, um, it makes sense, but I'm, uh, I guess I'm just a bit lost in the notation. Yeah, yeah, notation is heavy, I agree. So let's just look at the special case, actually. Let's look at the, the case where uh, everything is, um, is actually, um, let's look at the case of trivial vector bonds. So let's look at that case. Just to, to, to understand this, again, let's go back to our favorite example, m equal to equal. Okay, so what is this complex in this case? O -o Over there, this is just, uh, I mean, in this case, it's just, uh, I mean, uh, mn of uh, c infinity of m. Mn of omega one of n, Mn of omega two of n, and then goes to sorry, Mn of omega n of n. That's the last one, and this goes to zero. Okay, so this is the top one, and I, I'm having here these. And what is the what is the what is the lower one? The lower one is just uh, an n, not not an n. Is actually c infinity of m n d again or well, nabla c infinity of m. Oh, sorry, from the one of m. N and then up now omega two of n n and then here omega n of n n and is zero. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now these are uh, matrices here, so you can multiply any of these two. You just combine matrix multiplication with multiplication of forms, right? And of course, your degree will be increased as the degree of these things, right? So, what is this operator D now in this case? What is this operator D? Well, I, you see, the, the operator D in this case, uh, I, you, you give me a matrix of these things, I have to give you a matrix, but that's uh, that's. Okay, so what is D of some matrix here, for example, uh, you know, something like, um, well, this omega IG belongs to, for example, these guys imagine belong to omega P, for example. So this, I'm saying this is the commutator of P plus A, and this matrix omega ij. So basically, you apply this d to that, you multiply this by that, and then you go the other way around and you create that. Element. Okay, so I mean, uh, this is a, I really like this example because everything here is very, very concrete. Um. Well, I'm, I'm just 
slightly unhappy that when you write to matrix of something is over a module rather than of the ring. But I guess in this point, you just think of it as module as well. Uh, say it again. It's just when you write matrix of something that something should be a ring, but in here, the higher forms are not rings. No, it is a ring. It is a ring. Uh, yeah. uh, no, no, this is the whole thing is a ring. It's a oh, oh, yes, yes. It's okay. ring and n of omega of n. Yeah, okay. This is the ring of differential forms, in fact, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, but but we just came to kind of put it into its different components. Okay. okay. It's it's really like again a graded ring as differential forms are, but again, yeah, we just put it into component, but essentially it's a ring. And uh, again, this is, this is a good comment. Because it, indeed, because this is a ring, and then of this one is also a ring. So this guy is a ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and also just well, when you have endomorphism of, of probably just in general, when you have homomorphism from one vector bundle to another bundle, is it still a vector bundle? Yes, yes. OK. But yeah. then that, that yeah. makes sense. Oh, yeah, this called this is called endo bundle or an endomorphism bundle or or hum bundle. Yeah, this is a bundle yeah. because the operation of hum or endomorphisms. Hum is more general than endomorphisms, of course, but it, these are uh, canonical, categorical operations. So, I, I highly recommend a book uh, by Atia, but you don't have to read the whole book. Just uh, the first uh, 10, 15 pages of that book. Uh, this is called K theory, but in the beginning he describes uh, vector bundles. In, this is the best introduction to vector bundles. I mean. okay. And he describes uh, to you why, for example, every operation in, in, in linear algebra or module theory has its analog in vector bundle, provided that operation is somehow canonical and in, in, is in a sense continuous. But he describes, and it's not complicated at all. You can just read it. Yeah. Very good. So we can take a break, and then I come back, and then, um, uh, yeah, okay, for 10 minutes, uh, I come back at 10 past, and then uh, we can just uh, start. So let's. Uh, All right. So uh, now, so remember we have this R equal to number squared is, is here. That's what we know. Now, uh, there is something called Bianchi identity, or so this lemma, it's uh, sometimes called second Bianchi identity. It basically says that D of this guy is zero. I.e., we can also write it as a commutator of nabla and R equal to zero. Okay. Now the proof of this is easy. This is so abstract and kind of, it's like a machine now. So this becomes almost trivial because this is nabla and R is nabla squared. So that's equal to nabla nabla squared minus minus one. Now we have, we always have to put signs. Uh, degree of nabla squared, degree of nabla, nabla squared, nabla. Right now, degree of nabla squared is two. Degree of nabla is one, but degree of as 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 an operator, but degree of nabla squared is two. So this is even. So this is nabla cubed minus nabla cubed is equal to. So this is a very important uh, fact. Let's uh, note that that under this. Differential, although this is not quite a differential because d squared in general is not, uh, is, I'm not claiming this here, but this is uh, an upload of r is equal to zero. Okay, 
Now, um, so that's the end of the proof. Now, the second thing is that uh, trace map. So we're going now to construct maps in this direction. Call this trace. So this trace um, from omega of P of M and N of E to omega of P of M and E. Well, I mean, this is really an extension of trace from endomorphism ring to the ground field, right? So this, this acts like this trace of, so imagine you have an element here, so call it omega tensor eta, right? So we just don't touch this, just this is omega tensor, we call it trace of eta. Well, now this little trace is a trace that goes from endomorphisms of E to C infinity of M. Uh, because what is endomorphisms of E? I mean, endomorphism of E is, is I mean, it's, it's an element in this uh, space, so I mean, C infinity of endomorphisms of E, if you want. Uh, 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 yeah, I mean, I should say from C infinity of endomorphisms of E. Little trace from C infinity of endomorphisms of E to C infinity of E. So here is an, an, an element of matrix algebra over this fiber. You apply trace pointwise, and then you get a function. You get a function. All right. So that's this, this one, and this is the map. Okay. So make sure that you are happy with this map. If you are not happy with this map, let me know, because this map is going to play a big role for us now. Okay, in the case that we had, in the trivial case, that's very easy map now. Okay, so let me just write it now. Just let me give you an example. For E equal to, again, our favorite example, trivial bundle. Uh, so this we saw that we are dealing with omega p of, uh, oh sorry, uh, no, this big trace goes from mn of omega p of m to just, uh, or just, uh, I mean, uh, oh, 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 I made, I made a mistake, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. This is just now omega zero. I, I want to say that. Yeah, sorry. Okay. This is the one. Yes. This is B now. Sorry. Of course, I mean, we don't have a map on that like that. I mean, okay, this is B. Now, this second line, that's what I meant, is the wrong complex, of course. This is the wrong complex. So these are just uh, differential forms, usual differential forms, and there is this D. And this is our big uh, endomorphism forms with values in an endomorphism bundle. And uh, so let's look at this example. So you want to have a map like trace from mn of omega p of m, which is here, to omega p of m. I mean, what is this map? Trace of, say, omega i j is exactly omega i i, sums of omega i. So you just take elements on the main diagonal and sum them. If you have a matrix of p forms, you just uh, sum elements on the main diagonal, you get a make, you just get a P4, honest to God, P4. So this is a device, this uh, capital trace map is a device that brings us from this abstract from the sky basically to Earth. This is where we want to be basically, down here. We don't want to be in the sky all the time. 
this is convenient, but we don't want to eventually want to come down to Earth, which is over our manifolds. And this is the map. The map is very easy. Any questions about this map? Uh, yes. So, 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 what is the little trace then? Uh, little the, what? The, the small trace. Oh, a small trace is because I just write this as uh, tensor products of uh, two objects. One of them is in C infinity of n of e. The other one is in C infinity of uh, h p or uh, differential form, right? So I'm saying if I know how to calculate little trace on eta, then I know how to calculate capital trace. And this is the way little trace is defined. I mean, this little trace is, uh, um, it's, it's very simple. So let me write it here. Maybe I want, okay, so I want to write it here. I mean, this, this endomorphism is just, uh, what is a section here? Like, uh, it's just a map. Uh, it's just a map from M to this uh, bundle end of E such that it's uh, S of X belongs to end of EX, the spider over X for M. And to define this uh, trace uh, from endomorphism to, to, to the ground ring at each point, you don't need any basis. You can just uh, trace it from, you know, this trace from endomorphism to the vector space. Your ground field F is always defined. You don't need a basis here to define it. And that's this little trace. But it's done point wise. So you don't land in fields. You, you land in the in, in the ring of functions on the baseline. That's what it is. Yeah. So it is component wise trace. Yes. Yes. It's. I mean, the 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 right terminology is fiber wise trace. Oh. Yeah. It's called fiber wise. Yeah. It's exactly fiber wise trace. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the device we are going to use. As I said, this is the trace. Now there is a crucial lemma. There are two things, uh, one of them was, so there's a lemma is that uh, this decomposed with trace is equal to trace composed with capital D. Okay, so it means that these diagrams commute. That's a very important fact. So this is not a complex, it's something uh, huge. This is a complex and we have these maps from this top to, to theirs, to the bottom, and this relation holds. Okay, so now, um, Okay, so I, I, I will prove it soon, but I mean, proof of this is not difficult. I just have to give a little bit of um, um, motivation for the proof, but that, that's not difficult. But uh, the, the good news is this. All we need is uh, Bianchi identity plus this one uh, is all we need. All you need for characteristic classes. Uh, let me tell you why that's the case. Uh, because, okay, corollary of the lemma. Imagine we prove the lemma. Okay, now corollary of the lemma is, is the following. A trace of this uh, uh, operator R belongs to omega two of them is closed by E B of trace of 
R is equal to C. Why? I mean, the proof is very easy. Because BIG says that D of R is equal to zero. So if you feed the R to this, uh, to the right hand side, you're gonna get zero because trace of zero is zero. So here you have trace of R, it's DC, right? Uh, so star implies that D of trace of R. So, so this is a closed two-fold. And you remember that we love closed forms because they give us cohomology classes. They give, that's, the, the, that's where the topology is, right? And of course, closed forms are good because closed forms gives us elements of cohomology. Remember this Thoron cohomology, for example, was what? Uh, remember, we have this Thoron cohomology, for example, HP Thoron of M. It was closed in forms divided by exact in forms. Okay. And by this device, we can come from upstairs, downstairs, create some closed forms downstairs. But now this, uh, at this stage, it looks like very limited because we have just created a closed two form. What about something else? Can we construct something else? The answer is yes. Because this is an algebra, I can take powers of R, I can take linear com combinations of different powers of R and apply trace to them, come downstairs, and they're all closed forms. Uh, so let me just uh, tell you why. Okay, similarly, for any n, uh, d of trace of uh, Rn um, is equal to zero, i.e. Trace of Rn belonging to, oh no, R, R, R p belonging to omega 2p of m is closed to people. So by this device, I can take its class, class of D of trace of, uh, oh, sorry, RP belongs to H2P Laurent of M. It is a cohomology class, okay? So, this sorry, is, do you mean just the cohomology of trace of RP? Because if we do D, then that's it. Without D, yeah, thank you, yes. Just trace of R. If, if, if I apply D, it would be zero. It's like uh, killing the whole effort now, yeah. Right, very good, thanks. This is trace of RP, belongs to H2P, the wrong end. This is another class. Okay, so now, uh, there is a definition. Let me give you now the formal definition. And um, so, as I said, we can apply to these p powers and we can apply to sums of this thing. We can apply to polynomials, but you can, in, in fact, apply this to formal, uh, formal uh, power series. Thing. So, let Rx. the formal power series ring. So what is it? Rx 
you just ring off for all the power series. And you don't worry about convergence at all. The, the, the AI could be I factorial, for example. It could have zero radius of convergence. We don't care about that. That's why I put double brackets here. It means really huge. So, I mean, polynomials is a very, very small part of this. But this is a ring because you can multiply any two. Okay. Uh, this is a very interesting ring. It's called ring of formal power series. Now, for any f belonging to R x, you can uh, apply this uh, f to R. So let us define f of R by definition to be sum a i r i i from zero up to infinity. You see, now we are, we are so far upstairs because this is a ring, right? Remember that matrix algebra and all these things, matrices, this is a ring. You can apply to each of them. The only thing now you should worry is uh, these guys, uh, I mean, now we want to have something which has a meaning because we don't want to have a formal expression after all, we want to. But this makes sense. Because uh, differential forms after some stage are zero, right? So this Ri is zero if uh, 2i bigger than dimension of f. Because the only thing that this, this, this only goes up to that dimension, the forms only goes up to dimension. So as soon as 2i is bigger than dimension of m, because this is the degree of uh, R, or i is 2i. This is zero. So this sum is finite for each uh, manifold, actually. It's not infinite, but it's very convenient to work with formal power series. Right? OK, so this is absolutely finite sum. And uh, now we just take its trace. OK, so this is now the definition. Um, why is it that 2i? Sorry? Why is it? Um, like we are taking with two i, it should be i, right? I mean, I'm not understanding that one. You see, r r is a is a matrix value two four. Four. Oh. Right. Is a matrix value two four. So uh, r i is a matrix value two i four. Just multiplying, right? Is that clear? Yes. Thank you. Okay, no, no. So make sure you understand this. This is a simple, uh, pure algebra issue, but it's important to know. Okay, so definition for any f belonging to R of x, a formal power series. Characteristic class defined by F is the inhomogeneous, actually, cohomology class. Uh, class of trace of f of r belong to this sum h to i gram of n. You see, uh, for example, here uh, r belongs to omega two. I mean, r two belongs to omega uh, omega four. R r three belongs to omega six. So no one says that this is a homogeneous thing. This is a mixture of different forms, but it's important to realize it's always even degree, okay? It's always even degree. And uh, you apply this, you apply polynomial to this object here. It's, it's a purely algebraic construction. 
you apply trace and by this Bianchi identity and this theorem that these things commute, this it's D is zero. And then uh, you take this class. Okay. So this is the characteristic class defined by that? Yeah, this is the characteristic uh, class, yes. Thank you, yes. That's what we wanted to achieve, right? So the characteristic class defined by F is this. Okay, so now let's look at uh, the simplest ever example. And then uh, we move on uh, from uh, Are all characteristic classes defined by that? Uh, yes. All characteristic classes uh, defined like this. This is actually, uh, now I have to modify my statement. This is Chern Bay theory. So this is Chern Bay construction. Of characteristic classes. There are uh, purely um, topological constructions also um, that avoids this construction because there is a drawback here. There are two drawbacks. Uh, there are two weaknesses of this approach and there are a lot of good things about it, but there are two weaknesses. One weakness is that this works only in the smooth category, right? Because your manifold has to be smooth and your bundle, I mean, has to be smooth and everything. So. So you have to also absorb some differential geometry and all that. The second, the second drawback is that this, uh, in this approach, because we are using Durand cohomology, uh, so we lose uh, contact, mostly we lose contact with integral cohomology. So we don't see any torsions. In a more general uh, topological approach, uh, torsion can be also absorbed through these characteristic classes. So that's a, that's, that's a more um, kind of general construction. But the good thing about this is that, um, you know, it kind of relates to differential geometry. It's, it's ideal for index theory. It's ideal for physics. For a lot of things, uh, this, is, this is a very good approach. Um, yeah. So there are give and takes. Uh, so um, yeah, this is the this is the famous Chernobyl construction of characteristic classes via connection and curvature. Now also within Chernobyl, also there are at least two different approaches. This is a kind of one trace approach. There is another trace. There is another approach which uses invariant polynomials. It's equivalent to this, but uh, I, I like this one. I'll tell you why. This is. This seems to be better. But then the two eventually gives you the same amount of characteristic classes. No one knows. Okay. Now let's uh, construct our first characteristic class. So I'm, I'm raising everything because I'm assuming we have absorbed everything. Okay, term character. So example. Of complex vector bundles. Okay, so in this case, let's take f of x equal to e to the um, uh, minus x over 2 pi i. Okay. 
Um, well, I mean, this is this is a function, you, like exponential function, right? I mean, and then it's a, it's a formal power series. This is like one minus x over two pi i uh, plus, uh, I mean, minus x over two pi i uh, squared over two factorial and so on. Remember, we are using the fact that it be x equal to one plus x plus x two plus two, two factorial x three over three factorial and so on. And so, calculus expansion, uh, Taylor expansion of e to the x, and I'm just using uh, for my f. The first one is this one. So then, uh, so let e to m be a complex vector bundle. Complex vector bundle. So, by definition, the churn character of E is called churn character. E. This is, uh, by definition, this uh, class of traits of F, uh, I mean, exponential of minus. R over two pi i. Okay, so where R is equal to the curvature of a connection on E. Okay, so where this, uh, first of all, as, 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 a, as a cohomology class, where this lives? Well, this lives in, uh, in all even uh, differential, I mean, cohomology classes. So this belongs to, again, H even Durham of M, which is a direct sum of H2I Durham of M. So this is. This is not a homogeneous class. This is inhomogeneous in this sense, right? So that's that's this one. Now you may wonder why we have got uh, two pi i minus r over two pi i here. This normalization is extremely important and is extremely deep. I mean, normalization. What, what, what do you mean by inhomogeneous? Say uh, pl louder, please. What do you mean homogeneous? Oh, by homogeneous, I mean, for example, I mean, this is inhomogeneous, I said. It means that it has a component of degree zero, component of degree one, component of degree, two, I mean, degree two, degree four, degree six. That's right. It's not like degree four only or degree two only. The, like a polynomial is inhomogeneous, but the monomial X5 is homogeneous. That's, that's what I mean. All right, so now normalization. Uh, minus one over two pi i is actually, it, it's very deep and uh, a very important result. This guarantees that this is actually a rational form. Um, you don't have to understand this, but I just tell you, I mean, is needed. Make sure that churn E is rational. I mean, this uh, I need uh, I need to divert. I mean, to take uh, maybe five, ten more minutes to explain what the rationality of this class means. Uh, but just take it like that. I mean, this is, oh, this is two pi i, sorry. Uh, two pi i squared. <laughs> yeah, this uh, rationality it becomes important eventually, uh, everything we do, so, but uh, yeah. Okay, so that's, uh, that's what it is. Jeremy had a question that uh, I think I'd be interested in too. Uh, is this dependent on the connection chosen on me here? Oh, yes, that's a, that's a very good question. Uh, we will show, I will show that uh, this is actually independent of the connection, namely for any two connections, the classes are the same. The difference is an exact form. This, this has, has to be shown, yeah. 
Yeah, this was a good question. I was going to uh, discuss that uh, maybe next lecture. Yeah, but that's uh, that's important. But otherwise, if I mean, otherwise uh, you're out of luck because we haven't done like anything. I mean, we just we just took a connection randomly and we constructed this class. Okay, it's good, it's closed, and it's homology, but it has no meaning I mean, if if it is not canonical. It has to be independent of connection. Yeah. It is. It is. Okay, we'll see that. So, but now one property is uh, the algebraic properties of these things is important. So let me establish those. Uh, first of all, uh, what happens under the direct sum and what happens under the uh, on, on, on the under the product of bundles. Um, okay, so let me just. So proposition. Any formal power series belonging to this or this, because if you are over complex vector bundles, we work with this, right? And for any vector bundles, EMF over M. Uh, the, um, I mean, the basically what I'm saying is that trace of the trace of R, the class of trace of R E direct sum F, right, of F of this one, sorry, is equal to trace of f of r e direct sum trace of f of r f i e the characteristic class um, trace of F of R is additive so it's additive with respect to vector bundle sums so if you have two vector bundles we can take the direct sum and uh, this construction makes sure that uh, this is uh, I mean the construction that we did makes sure that this is always additive in particular uh, for chair character which is also defined like this is that so let me prove this and then you'll see what is at stake. Uh, what do you mean direct sum of two elements? Oh, sorry? What do you mean direct sum of two elements? Two what? The, the Chen class, it, the, the, the characteristic class is an element. Then what do you mean by direct sum of two elements? Oh, this is sum, sorry, no, no, this is sum. Is that what you meant? Yeah, and then, yeah. Well, then what this sum is? What is this sum in? Yeah, the sum is uh, because you are inside the cohomology ring, right? This is a ring. Uh, so you just, you just add them. It's a oh. sum of differential forms, right, in this case. But, oh. but cohomology forms a ring. You can also multiply. And very soon, we are going to multiply these things and play with these things like, like algebra. So this is yeah. OK. Very good, very good. So now let us uh, prove this, prove this proposition. Let me prove this proposition. So let double uh, E and double F be connections on E and F respectively. Okay, then nabla equal to nabla E, nabla F is a connection on E, the sum F, since 
In fact, we can just um, understand the meaning of this matrix, uh, two by two matrix notation. Let me tell you what it means. I mean, uh, this is just, uh, this is just, uh, uh, yeah, okay, so let's see. So because the infinity of, uh, we are looking at the infinity of M E D X on F, right? And we want to go into omega one of, uh, which is omega zero, one go omega one of M E D X on F. Everything here is uh, additive. So this is equal to a C infinity of M and E direct sum C infinity of M and F. Okay. And this is also goes into omega one of M and E direct sum omega one of M and F. So a section here, you can see it as something like this, S1, S2 column wise. And this operator now is acting like this. E, so S1 is two is mapped to that. So this is certainly a connection. So the point is that if you have connections on this bundle and that bundle, you can take the direct sum and you construct a connection by this device. You can construct other connections, but as we discussed, this is not, not going to matter. You'll see that. All right, so we have that. So now this idea then it follows that um, the curvature of this R of E dx on F is actually equal to R of is because you have to square this, right? If you, if you square this matrix, you're going to square this, square that, right? R E R F. Okay. And if you want to apply F to this, just think, think about it as matrix algebra or of module theory, whatever. If you have this, if you raise this to any powers, this is raised, this is raised, and nothing happened. So this is basically going to be f of r e, and down here f of r f, zero, zero. zero. Okay, now we are going to, to take trace of this. So continue. So trace of f of r e dx on f is equal to trace of f of r e plus, yeah, plus, not dx on, yeah, trace of f of r. That's it. So this construction is always additive. If you have two vector bundles uh, taking your exams, the characteristic class defined by the same uh, form of power series uh, just adds. So uh, as, as a special case then, any question about this proof? Make sure you understand this proof because this is kind of So in particular, what we have then, turn uh, E dx on F is equal to turn of E and turn of F. So next thing we want to understand is what is churn of E tensor F. What is the, what is the churn character of uh, tensor product of two bundles? So as this uh, proof shows, what we have to do is uh, start with connections on E and F and construct the connection on E tensor F. Okay, so um, I say this is uh, so proposition. Turn of E tensor F is equal to churn of E times churn of F. And here we are, I'm using the ring structure in, in, in differential forms and cohomology. So this is important. We have to observe that. 
So proof. Just briefly, you can just construct a connection on E tensor F by this one. So nabla of E tensor F. By definition, you can define to be nabla E tensor 1 plus 1 tensor nabla F. I mean, for example, uh, what is the sections of this infinity of M E tensor F? You see, the sections of the tensor bundle is tensor product of sections, but over this ring C infinity of n. So these are modules over C infinity of n. Okay. So this operator makes sense because first time applies on this leg, an identity here. This is identity, and from the second one, identity, and so. On. It goes through. So now, what is nabla squared? So we have to compute the curvature. So this shows that uh, R of E tensor E, which is uh, nabla E tensor E, oh, sorry, E tensor F squared. So I have to square this, uh, this guy. That's equal to nabla E tensor 1 plus 1 tensor nabla f squared. Then uh, this just follows uh, from high school algebra, just uh, nabla e squared tensor one plus nabla e tensor uh, nabla f. But if you think of it as, as operations uh, there, I mean, um, there's going to be cancellation. So nabla e tensor nabla f minus nabla e uh, tensor nabla f again plus one tensor nabla f squared. And these two things cancels. So it just shows that R of e tensor f is equal to R tensor one plus one tensor or F. Now, um, to compute churn, I have to compute exponential of these things. So let us uh, forget about that factor of one over two pi i. So I want to compute exponential of this thing, for example, right? R, imagine. So you want to compute exponential of this term, right? R e. Tensor one plus one tensor RF. Now, you have to be careful here because we are acting on this huge uh, complex upstairs still, right? So we are acting with those things. So, 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 so how is those two uh, the, the, the cancel? They, they cancel because Nabla is, 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 is an operator of degree one. So when they move over each other, they pick up a sign. That's the rule of signs. Uh, so it is in the class, not exactly the tensor then, I guess. It's, it's really zero, yeah. Oh, okay. It's just zero, yeah, yeah. So that they really cancel. So we have, to, now watch this. Of course, uh, for exponentials, you know that now you have to be very careful here because e to the a plus b for, for elements of rings in general is different from e to the a e to the b. But e to the a plus b is equal to e to the a e to the b if these guys commute. These guys commute, you can just go on and prove easily that this happened. And these two guys commute. Just think about it. You multiply this by that, that by that, you always get R E tensor uh, R F. Okay, so then I, I can apply this to this one. So is equal to E to the R E tensor one times E to the R F. So one, 
And basically, then it becomes e to the r e, and so e to the r f. Now I'm going to take trace. So churn is equal to trace of this guy. I mean, I said that let's forget about this minus one over two pi i factor because that's uh, at this stage that's not relevant to discussion. What is relevant is the nature of exponential function. This is churn of e to the um, uh, r e. So trace of e to the r e or trace of e to the r f. Now trace has this wonderful property that trace of a tensor b for endomorphism is equal to trace of a times trace of b. So this is equal to trace of r e times trace of r f. I mean f of this one. Sorry, I, I, I missed. Uh, I should have. I should have put f. Uh, exponential, no, 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 exponential, sorry. Exponential of R E, exponential of R E, sorry. And of course, this is churn of E times churn of F. Okay, well, again, you have to put 2 pi i here, but minus 1 over 2 pi, but that's a, that's a decoration uh, at this level right now. So then uh, this, uh, this, this finishes the proof. So that's a very important property. So, so far we proved that this uh, churn character and churn of tensor F. Remember, this first property was very general. This was for all characteristic classes. There was nothing special about this first property, right? So this is very general, but this is very, very particular because it used the uh, properties of exponential function. If I use, for example, tangent of x, if I use some other general random function, this wouldn't come out like this. So, no, so this is one, two, I just make a note here, this is a very important note. Two heavily depends on f of x equals to exponential of x, and this property that e to the x plus y equals e to the x to the y if xy equal to yx. So this is a very cherished function, exponential function. It is a very, very special, very, very important function. It's a lot of algebraic properties. And uh, for example, this one. So, so in general, for characteristic classes, I cannot claim this, but I can always claim this one. This is always true. Uh, so I think uh, we have just used the 10 minutes uh, that, uh, so let me just uh, now,